Hello, homebodies. Welcome back. I thought I would give you a tour of the dining room today. Chipper's eating a bone at my feet right now and Scout's in the kitchen. When we bought this house, the former owners did not have a dining room. They used the kitchen as their dining room, but they did not have a formal dining room. They used this room that I'm in right now as another office. They just had a desk and like a chair and there was nothing in here. But when I first look at the, looked at this house, I thought, oh, this would make a perfect dining room. It's not too far from the kitchen and it's big enough for my dining room set. So I'm gonna show you in a little while, I'll give you a tour of my dining room set. But if you can see behind me, I have a hutch and that has my wedding china. I picked the wild strawberry pattern from Wedgwood as my wedding china. We use it on special occasions. It's nice to have good china for when you have company than using your old crappy chipped everyday dishes. <laughs> but I don't use them every day, but I do use them every day to de decorate my house. So Wedgwood china, this particular pattern is bone china, so it can be very pricey. When I was engaged back in the 90s, um, the trend of not registering for China already started. Many of my friends and relatives only registered for everyday dishes. They did not register for China. I bucked the, ch the trend because I loved Wedgwood China. I love this pattern of wild strawberry and I knew I wanted to display it in my house. I love country decor. So, and I knew I couldn't afford it. You know, that's the thing with fine china is there you know most times in your life you're paying for other things and you don't you can't afford a luxury like fine china really one of the only times in your life where you have an opportunity to get expensive housewares is in your wedding during your wedding time when you register so my opinion on it was why would I register for cheap crap that I could buy myself? I'd rather register for things that I knew I couldn't afford and may never be able to afford. And it's the one time in your life when people are giving you substantial gifts. And so to me, it was a no brainer. I didn't want people to give me cheap crap I could buy myself for my wedding. The other thing is um, a lot of my wedding gifts are very meaningful. You know, they're items that, yes, they were expensive, but also they are displayed in my home with love. And when I look at them, I rem I'm reminded of the friends and family who came to my wedding and who gave me, you know, these nice gifts. So my advice to young brides is don't register for things that cheap crap you can buy yourself, like a toaster. Why are you registering for a toaster? A toaster is gonna last five years. And toasters are pretty cheap. So do you want your grandmother to buy you a toaster that's going to break in five years? You're going to throw in the garbage or a crystal bowl that you have on your dining room table or in your kitchen table that every time you look at it, you're reminded of your grandmother. So when you're picking things for your registry, think of things that are going to be sentimental to you in the future that will remind you of the people who you love who came to your wedding and supported you. When I look at a lot of pieces of my china, I remember who gave them to me. I know which piece my grandmother gave me and my grandmother's not here anymore. But when I look at those pieces of china, I remember her. I know which pieces my parents gave me. I know which pieces my in-laws bought me. So to me, that makes more sense is to register for things that you know you can't afford and may not be able to afford and register for things that are gonna be meaningful to you in the future and that you can look to in the future and remember your wonderful wedding and all the people who love you. So when I look at my china, I kind of remember, you know, all the wonderful people who bought me, who bought me this china and it's proudly displayed in my home. It's adding to the decor of my home. So it's not just sitting in a cupboard hidden away, collecting dust. It's part of my home decor. That's why I wanted to have an open hutch like the one behind me, because I wanted to display my china, because wild strawberry china is, it's very delicate and it's very pretty, and I wanted to have it always displayed in my 
dining room. This dining room set actually wasn't very expensive. Um, my husband surprised me with it. When we first got married, we did not have a dining room set. So I had all this china and I had no place to display it. And I really, really, really wanted a dining room set. So we had gone to a local furniture store and they were having a big blowout sale. And this set was one of the one of the floor model pieces. And it was on sale and we looked at it and I, you know, I really loved it, but we didn't buy it. And the next day I had to run errands and I was pregnant with my son at the time. And when I came back from running errands, this was, we were living in a townhouse at the time. I had to walk through the garage into the kitchen and the dining room was right next to the kitchen. When I walked into the kitchen, this set, this dining room set was in, was in the, the dining room. Joe had surprised me and this was my 30th birthday. So when I look at my dining room set, I remember that it was a surprise that Joe got for me to surprise me on my 30th birthday. I think about how excited I was to put all my china in it and display it. So I have eight place settings of my china displayed in this hutch behind me. And I have many other pieces of china. One of the things I love about this particular design of Wedgwood china is that the wild strawberry, they made all types of pieces to go with wild strawberry. So for example, these are candlesticks that I have on my dining room table. I have candlesticks, I have vases, I have a bell, I have a tea caddy, I have trinket boxes, all in the wild strawberry Wedgwood pattern. And so those are all additional pieces that I have that go with my set. I also have crystal, a set of crystal that I'll show you. And you'll see that I mix my china in with other parts of decor. So for example, in my, this is my crystal hutch. I have some of my Wedgwood china mixed in there, like a platter, vegetable bowl, bud vase. On the wall, I have a couple different dishes. The cake plate in the middle was one of the gifts my grandmother gave me. She also gave me the coffee pot. See, I remember what every piece I got. My brother gave me one of those vegetable dishes. I have two of them. Joe bought me these candlestick holders for our 20th wedding anniversary a couple years ago. He also bought me the tea caddy for our 20th anniversary. So he got me a several pieces for our 20th wedding anniversary because he knew that I like to use it for decor. So my advice to brides who are engaged right now, don't just register for mundane, cheap stuff. I wouldn't register for anything I could buy myself. You know, like a toaster. You can buy your own toaster. Toasters are 25 bucks. Don't register for that. Register for something that you know you're not gonna buy yourself or that's out of your price range. But register for things that you like. If there's a particular crystal bowl that you think would look good in your living room, register for that. If there is a Tiffany picture frame that you really, really want for your wedding photo, but you know you can't afford it, register for the Tiffany picture frame. Register for some good dishes. Maybe it doesn't have to be fine china, but some good dishes that you know will, la will, will last but that might be too expensive for you to pay for right now. But I wouldn't register for things that are cheap or that you can buy yourself. I understand that you want to register for things that, that fit everybody's budget. You're not just going to register for things that are $400. That of course makes sense. But you know, even if you registered for fine china, there are pieces of fine china that are not that expensive. So, you might register for a fine china pattern. Maybe one place setting is $150, that's a pricey. But there might be a bud vase, that's $30, that someone might wanna get you. Or there might be, uh, someone might buy you a picture frame in your wedding pattern. 
um, that's $50. So not every piece of fine china is going to be expensive. But collectively, it's probably not something that you're going to be investing in. Um, but again, put some nice things on your registry that you know you can't afford and may not be able to afford. Remember, sometimes people chip in for wedding gifts. So you might have an expensive crystal bowl on your registry and three of your friends decide to chip in and give that to you. So it's not necessarily going to be out of everybody's price range. Um, and you know, again, think about it. This is the one time in your life when you're getting married that you can ask for luxury items. It's the only time in your life that you have a gift registry where you're asking people to give you luxury items. So ask for luxury items. Again, sometimes people can chip in together and get you the expensive crystal picture frame that you want or a Tiffany silver bowl. You know, this is the one time when you can ask for expensive items that maybe you can't afford yourself that you're probably not going to buy in the future. Let's be honest. After you get married, life happens. You get busy. Things get expensive. You might start having children. You're going to be focused on your housing costs, your car expenses, your children's expenses. You're not going to be buying Wedgwood China. We went through a really lean time after we got married. Again, we had our son pretty much after we got married. And so, and then we wanted to buy a house and we were saving for that. I mean, obviously I was not going to buy my own China anytime near my wedding. So the only way I was going to get Wedgwood China was if I registered for it. And I'm very glad I did. I don't regret registering for my China. It has been proudly displayed in my home for 20, over 20 years. When I have company, I, I have good China. I don't have to pull out the chipped everyday dishes that I have in my ca kitchen cabinet. I have good dishes set aside for dinner. And again, we have used them on special occasions and holidays. So that's my two cents about wedding china and formal dining rooms. We do use this formal dining room. Do I use it every day? No. But it is nice to have a nice place to eat separate from the kitchen where, you know, we can have a nice meal with good china. So it is nice to have that. So I'm going to be giving you guys a tour of the dining room. I'll describe a lot of the different items in it as I'm giving you the tour, but it is one of my favorite rooms in the house.
So that's my dining room. In the tour I just gave you, I showed you a high chair. So there's a story behind that high chair. When I had Julius, we didn't buy a high chair. Um, I didn't register for baby things. I didn't have a baby shower. So we had to buy our own high chair, and that was fine. Um, but I didn't want to buy just a plastic crap high chair that I was going to throw out after he outgrew it. I wanted to get a family heirloom. I wanted a wooden high chair that was custom painted, and I knew it was going to cost a little bit more than your typical plastic high chair, but I wanted it to be special. I wanted to keep it in the family, give it to Julius someday, and maybe he could use it for his kids, or when grandkids visit someday, I'll have a high chair for them. And I have used this high chair for friends' kids and my families, my nieces and nephews that were babies who came over, so it's not like it's not being used. If somebody comes over with a baby, I already have a high chair. That is the high chair Julius used when he was a baby. And he obviously newborn babies don't need high chairs, so we didn't order the high chair right away. When he was about six months old, I wanted to order the high chair. So I went online and I found a woman who custom painted wood furniture. And through her, we just hired her and she bought the high chair and she would paint the high chair any way you wanted it to be painted. So it was a lot of money. So we were saving up to pay for this expensive high chair. It was expensive for us. And we had the idea of painting um, fire trucks on it because my father-in-law was a retired New York City fireman. And so my in-laws came to visit, to visit, to meet the baby. And we told them the plan for the high chair, but that it was expensive. We were saving up to pay for this high chair. And as my in-laws were leaving, my father-in-law surprised us and said um, that they wanted to contribute to help us pay for the high chair and gave us half the money. And so we were able to order the high chair. So that was a big surprise and a delight. So you'll notice in the footage on the high chair that I wanted it to be cobalt blue and we wanted a fire truck painted on it. My husband wanted elements that reflected his father. So he was an engine 88. So the fire engine is engine 88. And on the back of the high chair is an emblem that my husband's mother designed for engine 88. There's Dalmatian dogs on it. There are fire trucks. There's, and there's even a fireman with a brown mustache because my father-in-law had a mustache so and he had brown hair and so she even painted a new york city fireman with, with a mustache that looked like him so that my son's grandfather was depicted on the high chair it came out really cute and yes that is the high chair my son used to eat all his food <laughs> until he outgrew it and it stays in my dining room in the corner. And someday if he wants it for his son, he can have it. Or I'll just keep it here for when grandkids come over or other babies come over and we use it then. When we had our dog Joy and she was teething, she bit the bottom of the high chair and like scraped some of the paint off. And I don't want to fix it because it reminds me of Joy and it's her little mark that she left on the high chair. So that just kind of adds to the history of the high chair. So, you know, the high chair reminds me of Julius when he was a baby, but it also is a little reminder of joy when she was a baby. Uh, and so it's very sentimental. It has an honorable place in the corner of my dining room. And it's a, fair, a family heirloom now. So that's the tour of the dining room. So I'm going to get started dusting in here because it's hot outside and it definitely needs to be dusted, I think. So we're going to do that. And then I have to figure out what I'm making for dinner. Are you ready to make some chicken stir fry? All right. It is a hot summer day in the Catskills and I don't want to put the oven on. And so I'm going to make a really easy, quick 
stir fry and I'm gonna do it with some um, Asian noodles which I'll show you later so let me show you what I have ready to go so this is just my chicken breast that I keep frozen I defrosted it and I cut it into strips I have one chopped green onion this is about three cloves of chopped garlic and I just use whatever vegetables I had in the fridge so I had a a red bell pepper, I had a yellow squash, and I had an onion. When I make stir fry, I'll just use whatever vegetables I have in my fridge. So if I have snow peas, I'll use snow peas. If I have a zucchini, I'll put a zucchini in it. If I have, if I have a green pepper, I'll put a green pepper in it. So you can pretty much put any vegetable you like into stir fry. Sometimes I'll shred a carrot and put it in there. Pretty much any vegetable goes in stir fry. So I use up whatever vegetables I have to make stir fry. And it's a pretty easy recipe. I didn't have jarred stir fry sauce. So I decided to make my own. I just grabbed a recipe from Pinterest. So I have my shaker bottle. And in here I put a third cup of low sodium soy sauce a fourth cup of sesame seed oil and a tablespoon of cornstarch and I just shook it up so you can just shake it up and that's my stir fry sauce I'm also going to add to this the garlic when I cook it if you don't have one of these shaker bottles you can use a mason jar mason jars are very cheap just put the, the lid on the mason jar and shake it up you don't need a special shaker bottle to make stir fry sauce. So I do make my own stir fry sauce if I don't have the jarred kind, but right now I just didn't buy it. So I just made my own. I always have sesame seed oil and I always have soy sauce. So that's an easy way to just make a little, your own stir fry sauce.
joining me for stir fry. I hope that you enjoy it. It's a good summer meal because you don't have to turn your oven on. See you next time.